Before I begin this next section, I'd just like to clarify a few things. So, why wouldn't we use the object variant of our primitive data types? Well, that's the thing. You don't really have to. I just wanted to show you how everything in JavaScript is based on objects. And I would recommend that you just use the primitive data primitive type variant because data access to such to such data actually so access to such data is faster than using the actual object because with object you have to create you have to allocate some sort of uh say allocate some sort of memory to the object or rather let's just say resources to the object and accessing an object can be slower in some cases whereas accessing a direct value is a lot faster so yeah that's that's a, that's all I wanted to say so let's get right into this next section so in this section we'll be talking about the properties of a class the inner contents of a class in more detail so these are some properties like we saw before and to declare to def, to not declare to to find objects a little better objects themselves reflect real things like real life things real objects and in that sense an object tends to have attributes or properties that reflect a real life thing that it represents so let's say we have a person so this is a common example it has it has a name a person has a name a name an age a gender and so on and so yeah so we have a person so this is an abstraction of data we have a unit of data that holds a this collection of smaller data or attributes properties that hold some data attributes some actual values and that that reflects something in real life or you could also say that have a particular solution implemented that's for a class in other programming languages objects in JavaScript are kind of the same similar thing to classes in other programming languages but they're you can say they're similar in a sense I like to think of in JavaScript there are just objects there are no classes really because JavaScript doesn't really have a sort of you define a class and then you have an object kind of situation an object is an instance of that class you don't have that here so if you didn't know what I was talking about just now then forget it you don't have to worry about that just know in JavaScript we have objects and objects contain a set of information that tend to reflect real life things in our application anyway like for example, we have a shape. Let's say we have a shape object. Let's call it a rectangle. So a rectangle is going to have a couple, a few properties in it. So let's say width. It's going to have a width, 20, comma. It's going to have a height, comma, after that. And then we're going to have area, an area attribute. And it's just going to be 20 times 15. So notice here how... I should I didn't define area as width times height. We'll get into that later on in this section. So now that we have an object, let's access our properties. We're just gonna simply do the following. So let's do console log rectangle width console log rectangle height and console log rectangle area oops I forgot to end oh I did a mistake here so don't end your final attribute a final property with a um, semicolon it should be just nothing and then you end the curly braces with a um, semicolon as if you're declared a variable and there you go so you get the width the height and the area Okay, so we accessed our properties, and we have another way of accessing properties as well. We can access properties through an expression of some sort. So let's say, let's get rid of this. Let's say, let's name some var 
proper prop equals and string the name of the property area and then console log we're going to say rectangle so it's like you're accessing at, you could i don't want to say it's an array but you can use the object name in square brackets and then define whatever property in a string and it'll get the proper it'll get the right thing so that kind of rhymed <laughs> sorry um, so prop the var variable prop stores the value area and so we're basically calling we're c getting the object rectangle and in square brackets we define whatever property we want which is defined in a string and in this case it's area so let's see that so we got the area and it, we don't have to store it in a variable we could just do it directly so you might use this in a situation where you have multiple objects and you you just you were looking for a certain property in that object and if it returned and you you don't know what property is in the object to begin with so you just call it like this this is another way of calling it, instead of using the dot of the property name so that might come in handy if you don't know the properties of your object so moving on let's say we wanted to add a property to our object so let's make a new object now let's get rid of the shape we're gonna have a variable called car equals square brackets close that all right we're gonna have a new car year 2016 and make it's gonna be a mercedes-benz mercedes-benz okay so i want to add a property to it property to this car so if you remember last time we can define a property like this. So car model. We just write dot and then add the attribute name equals S63 AMG. You could define it like that. Because if it doesn't already exist, JavaScript will say, hey, this doesn't exist. So I'm going to add it to your object for you. So that's a cool, that's pretty cool, one cool feature of JavaScript. Car. And when we show car now, you'll get the added object. If we remove this, let's remove it, you won't have that. So that's that. And let's try to add it in the other way, the way we had the string sort of implementation with the square brackets. Let's say model. And let's see if this works. And it does. So you can define, you can access uh, properties, excuse me, properties in this way or with the dot attribute property name excuse me I keep mixing those two up for some reason alright so now let's try to remove a property from an object so let's make a new object now it's gonna be a person now so we're gonna say var person equals should be equals so delete that okay and we're going to make some attributes of, attributes of a person. So we have F name, let's say Tom, L name, say Jones, so Tom Jones, like the singer, age, I don't know how old he is, but let's say 75. And then we're going to say here gender, he is male. Okay, so... Here we have this object, so console log person. And then we get the all the attributes, all the properties with their values. So first name, last name, age, gender. So may, let's say I want to remove the age, for example. So let's see that. To do that, we do the following. We use the delete keyword. So if you remember this keyword, I used it before in arrays. And that's when I deleted a val an element from the r from the array. So in JavaScript, this keyword delete is actually meant for objects because what it does, it assigns, it sets the value of this property to undefined. And when it's undefined, it just removes it altogether. So. It, as you can see here, it doesn't leave some sort of empty or it doesn't leave some undefined value. It deletes it altogether. So that's how you can see this keyword is meant for objects themselves and not just for arrays where it left us. It just left an empty value there. So 
Moving on, when thinking of properties of an object, try to think of objects, the object's purpose and functionality, and maybe think of what kind of attributes, characteristics, rather, or properties, basically, it should have. So, so it can be strings, numbers, booleans, arrays. You can have pretty much anything here. Oftentimes, we use like direct values, but we can also use functions. So, if you recall, and back in this, so let's get, let me get rid of all, I mean, actually I don't want to get rid of that. Remember this rectangle example I said here that I will leave this for later? Well, we're getting to that right now. So, I don't just want, let's make a new example actually, or should, let's make a new example. So, in this example with the triangle I'm going to make, I don't want to have direct numbers like this because if I happen to change the width and the height of the shape, the area will stay the same if it, if I kept it with if I kept the things everything like this. So let's make a new object now called triangle. So var triangle equals oh, create our object now. Have open everything, close the curly braces. So let's have some attributes now inside some properties, excuse me, I keep messing those up. So base seven is gonna be equal to 17. Height is gonna be, not like that, height is gonna be equal to 34. And now we're getting to area. So here is where we apply a function as the actual value of our property. And what we do here is we type in function and Sublime Text gives us all the options we could have. We're gonna use function without a name because this way we're gonna call this property which is gonna basically run this function that's gonna return a value. We'll talk more about functions in the next chapter. Just know in, in, this, sec, in this chapter we'll, we'll just be using functions to return some value basically as a part of a property. And we won't get we won't make them too complicated, so don't worry about that. So in the function, we're gonna use return, which basically says, okay, this function is gonna give this result and save it to area. So it's gonna return. Now, what we're gonna do is use another keyword that's specific to objects, and it's called this. What this does, it says you're referencing the object wherever the wherever you are, so the base object. So we're referencing triangle, this triangle object right here. We're saying this base times this height divided by two. So why didn't I just call height? Well, in, if when we're working inside the object, base and height aren't really defined yet. They're not really set. They're not made real. They're not realized. They're defined in the background as something to be used for later, but they're not called or anything. They're not used anywhere. So we can't say we can't call height and base by themselves. And if we reference triangle inside triangle, it doesn't work because it will think it's some other triangle out there. If you kind of understand what I'm saying, this is, has to do with something with scope, which basically says here, okay, this we're referencing wherever we're, whichever scope we're in, and then the scope we're in is, is inside the triangle object, this variable right here, and for basically what scope is like the realm of the available variables and data to be used by a function or by by the programmer themselves or the program. So just know, to recap, just to sum up what I just said, use this when referencing the attributes, the property, excuse me, or any other th anything else inside the object. You can't go about calling triangle dot base as you would in outside the object by access, like outside the object when you're accessing these um, attributes because you can't call this would think it's another different a different separate entity of triangle if you kind of understand what i'm saying just know use this dot base times this dot height in the in the situ or this dot property when you are working with 
inside the object if you want to access other properties. You use this dot property name. So we'll see why we use this in a sec, the results. So, okay, we used our function now. I mean, we defined our function that'll return the area of a triangle based on these properties, values, divided by two. All right, so we're gonna have, so where's console log triangle, oops, that's triangle dot area. Oops, and since it's a function, this is another thing you should know. We have to use parentheses after the property name because now it's a function. Well, actually, if a, you have a function inside an object, it's often called a method. And functions tend to be entities of their own, like a function just floating there. And, and a, met, a method is basically a function that is a property of an object. So we'll call those methods. I have also used those words interchangeably, function and method, I mean, because in JavaScript, all functions that we use so far are essentially methods of objects. They're properties of objects that happen to contain functions. So let's see the results of triangle.area. You get 289, which checks out. But let's see here if I just put triangle.base as if I accessed it, access the values on the outside and actually work. Oh, I didn't save it actually. Actually, this time it works strange enough, strangely enough. In other test trials I had, it, some similar situations didn't work for this. But the proper way to do it is using this, just so you know because this says you're working with this triangle because there could be another variable named triangle out there or something or from another coming from a different source in your web application or in your pro in your program so be careful with that just remember use this inside your a um, objects so let's say we just called it without anything we just said height base and height and you get reference error because you're def you're th like this will be some sort of variable out there globally in the global scope around in the whole program or somewhere else just know use this or the name of the function I mean name of the object this is the proper way to do it in object in objects so use this okay I think I've gone on about that enough so just remember use this and this is now a method of an object and if you recall the strings we were working on and the arrays we worked with all the functions we called are actually methods and built in in JavaScript we have objects the object arrays with all like attributes of all these properties with functions inside them that do various things so i think with that i'll stop here so i'll conclude this tutorial now